Once upon a time, that's how these things usually start, yes? A sister took pity on her brilliant, prolific, and incredible brother. She had somehow gotten it in her head that he might be lonely, or at least that's what she claims. And so, on a perfectly fine, productive Friday afternoon, the sister picked up her son from the Elwood Academy for Boys and dropped the aggravating child off on my, uh, the, the brother's doorstep. Now you, I mean, the boy, had visited Quadrangle Manor on a few occasions. Each time was complete with a grand entrance from the brother, who was in fact a professor and inventor with a profound and soaring intellect. With each visit, the inventions he exhibited became more slick and cutting edge. The boy eagerly awaited the revealing of the professor's latest contrivance, but this, the most captivating of visits, started a bit differently. Well, let's see here. If I configure the trans-dimensional velocity regulator at approximately 0 0.887 microseconds past the... Oh, you're here? I have the most incredible invention to show you this visit. Unfortunately, I'm a bit <laughs> indisposed at the moment. Hey guys, Sulem is here, and we're playing Quantum Conundrum! Uh, before I start moving around, just gonna give you a little preview here. This game was released since <laughs> last year, so I'm a little bit slow in this, but, um... Yeah, it's kind of like a physics <clears throat> excuse me, a physics-related puzzle game. That's kind of like Portal, but instead of trying to get yourself across a level, it's more of manipulating objects and their physical properties to help you get ac across the level. So, with that said, um, I played quite a bit of this uh, game already. And I'll tell you more about that later, so, um, this first part's gonna be have a lot of narrative, so I'm just gonna go ahead and not talk a lot. <laughs> if you take your luggage into the foyer, I will join you as soon as I can. Of course. Let's push the big red button. Wait, what was it? That's a face. My goal is to break every single face lamp in there, yeah. Alright. Oh, you uh, that's another one. machine. Let's toss that. Whoa, why is this side so heavy? Ah, there it is. There. There's a little picture of the uh, professor brother person. As mentioned in the story. Oh, good. That should be a safety release for the door up there somewhere. Now, where on earth did I put that? Bam! This game might be a little bit laggy, um, my computer is, is kind of poopy as you all know. <laughs> Actually, it's a laptop and a really bad one at that. But you know, oh, I do yes. what I can. You're not Let's go ahead and jump tall, on this. You? you should be able to use your luggage to give you an extra boost. Wait a minute. There you go. Something isn't quite right here. Oh, no, 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 no! Ah! You what? <gasps> My crystal unicorn collection. No. <laughs> Wait. What just happened? I'm not entirely sure where I am right now. The security uplink on my watch still seems to work, so I can see you and. Hello? You, you you can hear me, right? Jump around a bit if you can. Nope. Nope. No jumping. Ah! It seems as if I can <laughs> still tap into the intercom So system. scripted. Well, I most certainly can do better than this. Testing. 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 Testing! There. Ha! Much better. Now, what in the world are you doing here? Were you supposed to be here today? No matter. Well, judging from the current underwhelming amount of light in this room, we're still on backup power. My head is killing me. It seems as though I now possess a rather large epidural hematoma. A bump on the head. Do me and yourself a favor and head to the front hall. There's a way to restart the power grid. Last I remember, I was in the new technology sector, and then... I don't know. I do think the failsafe was tripped accidentally. Unfortunately, the front door will remain in lockdown. 
until you can restore the power. Yeah, so once again, forgive me if it lags. I'm trying to. Pl I'm playing around with the um, video settings, so hopefully, it it'll be better than my first time, first time around. Let's keep going on here. This is forward, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. If you head over to my office over on the left, you should be able to restart the manor's power grid. <laughs> when I first look at this picture, uh, I, was, I was thinking. I was thinking. All right, let's go ahead Throw and that put switch the switch there. here. That should be the one. Well, that wasn't as effective as I'd hoped. You'll have to reactivate mm. the generators in each sector in order to mm. lift the current lockdown. Just uh, mm. take the glove in the box with you. I wish you could see my facial expression right now, as I am not pleased. What you are holding is an early prototype of the interdimensional ship device, or IDS device for short. It's one piece of my latest invention that should come in handy. Get it? You know, because it's a glove. <laughs> Very funny, Professor. Pony, pony. Alright, let's go ahead and move along. If you can access the generator at the back of each wing, we might be able to lift the lockdown on the rest of the house. It seems as if the breaker did unlock the blue wing. Well, I suppose you should start there first. Hmm. I think mine's this one on the bottom right here. <laughs> A little nice uh, mustache goatee combo right there. Yeah. Alright. There's something I must tell you. My latest invention has required me to make a few adjustments to the house since the last time you barged in. Uh, I mean, visited. Now, one of the topics that our family has been studying for several generations are rifts existing between various dimensions. I've been able to develop a power source that will channel enough energy into one of these dimensional rifts that it can be widened enough to travel through. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought it was going to be for a two-for-one there. Oh, well. Ah. Yeah, a little teaser in some of the uh, devices. Oh, this way. Yeah. That we might get to use later in the game, but I haven't reached that point yet. The glove controls the power source, which allows you to travel to whichever dimension has rifts in the area. You won't have control over the ability to switch dimensions yet. Just be patient. This door is using one of my inventions, the repetitive, periodic, articulating gruy day. Or a drinking bird. Except it's far more advanced. Oops. Sorry, chicken coffee at the same time. <laughs> this way. Oh no! Oh, no. There you go. Uh, well, because your glove is an early prototype, it has a few limitations in terms of dimension accessibility and the distance it can be from a receptacle in order to function. You'll see what I mean eventually. Little grumpy cats here. Derpy grumpy cat. <laughs> All right. Yeah, the game kind of lagged between uh, between doors because it's kind of like one entire huge map. It's not like separated into like loadable levels or anything. So, you might experience some lag in between, but uh, hopefully, this it should such run. An early experiment with dimensional shifting, so I decided to have it triggered remotely with the drinking bird. That it should run uh, smoothly, more or less. A door, the bird will trigger a dimensional shift. There's an IDS battery in the machine that will power the dimensions. Which in this case is... 
Fluffy. fluffy dimension. In addition to Fluffy being embarrassingly adorable, it's also rather useful because everything is ten times lighter than normal. <laughs> Oh, look at that. I, I did not notice that before. That's funny. Okay. I really want to zoom in because those would make really nice screenshots for my custom video thumbnails. Yeah. Alright. Though that uh, looks like a regular see. scale, it is no! in fact a portable Just kinetic it. mass to electricity converter. You know the words, a switch. <laughs> Ooh. Dropping a couple frames there. Wait, what does this even look like? This. Yeah, nothing special. What interests me is that the light still remains on, even though it's broken, but when you pick it up, it turns off? That's weird. Yeah, how about we, how about we fix it? Oh no! Come on, Vase, cooperate. Yeah, whatever. Whoa, whoa! What? What? Okay, I didn't even hear that one break. I have to go back and watch that one. That was that was weird. Now, let's move along here. Uh, okay. There's that lovely bird again. Sometimes I call him Desmond. Desmond. Desmond the. Yes. Something to note. Since you're holding a version of the IDS device, you, in fact, are not the you in an alternate dimension. Let me try that again. You remain constant. So no matter the dimension, your mass, shape, speed, and trying personality remain the same. You should throw that IDS battery into the receptacle mounted on the wall. Let's see if we can make it from here. Uh... Yeah. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Come on. How about a backwards throw? Huh? Backwards jump throw. Yeah. Nope. Wow, I fail. Come on, third time's charm. Let's toss this overboard. The receptacle is up on the second floor alcove. Yes, I can see that. Oh, wow. Okay, you know, I, I don't even deserve it anymore. <laughs> I give up. I'll just... That receptacle will distribute the power go. source around the room, allowing you to now use your IDS device to switch dimensions at your leisure. I'm so strong. Yeah, look at me. All right. As I mentioned, dimensional rifts in the manor are magnified by the stabilizing energy from the IDS receptacle and batteries. Mental pulsar. Henry the Eighth, ha, the eighth power. I get it. So I just like looking this at the little uh, you to details in the game. Between dimensions, when you're wearing the IDS glove. Ah, uh, lag, lag. Ah, that's Dolly. Dynamic Object Linear Ligation Interface. To you, a cloning device. I like my house just so. So I decided to add functionality to her to keep everything consistent. Uh oh! Uh, I'll need to tune that later. I'll take that, thank you. Now where does this go to? Ah, right there. Yoink! Let's fluffatize things up. Pick this safe, and we're gonna put it over here. There we go. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Hey, hey! Focus, mouse. Focus. This gets really disorienting with the uh, the occasional lag. These are my own particular hybrid beams of carbon dioxide and neodymium dope yttrium aluminum garnet lasers using an alternating ray configuration. Gives them an extra kick. Note, you can actually die in this game. Then you know, it gives you like little cute messages when you do. 
<laughs> I'll show you guys later, but not now. Alright. That picture does not change. How disappointing. What is this one? Ooh. What is that even? Alright, um... We're gonna want to toss something heavy over there. Okay, we'll just toss one of these chairs. Didn't even need to use the safe. Unfortunately, the breaking of this glass is a necessary evil. Don't take that as permission to do it elsewhere. There you go. Oh no, black boy. Nice. So yeah, I've kind of, <laughs> I've kind of played through an entire hour worth, an hour's worth of this game. So I kind of know what to do. Uh, for many of the levels. Gonna start talking again. I, mean, I want to explain myself. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was recording a whole hour yesterday, or 70 minutes, whatever, and I was like, you know, I, I was looking at a post production, and I was like, you know, I'm not feeling it. I, I just didn't feel it when I was recording, and I knew it, but I recorded anyway. And so when I kind of listened to myself and everything during um, during the uh, post production, I was like, I, I didn't feel like it was worth it. You know, it wasn't worthy. I'm putting it online for you guys, for the two people who are watching it. <laughs> I just wasn't feeling my game, and so um, I decided, after uh, a lot of time of self-contemplation, that I'm just going to go ahead and re-record the whole thing. Because I'm an overachiever. <laughs> oh, that uh, creature there is an interdimensional kinetic entity, or Ike. Hello, Ike. Yeah, I know a lot of um, partner partnerized YouTubers will. Uh, they have. To, they will. You know, I understand that. You you will have to like update your content regularly on a daily basis, and when you're on that kind of schedule, you don't have the luxury of you know always going back and um, in your post production to you know decide whether or not you like it. You, you know, you more or less have to be on your A game every single time you record. And, uh, you know, I'm not a big time recorder, I just like recording when I like to, which uh, explains why I'm not, well, you know. But anyway, um, I'm losing my train of thought now. Oh, I picked these little fragments. Um, but yeah. Stop for a minute and take a look at the painting. No. No. What if I go backwards? I have to look at it. The machine I referred to as Dolly started Got out as a simple metal forge that had been in the family since medieval times. The original quadrangle suit of armor was actually constructed in this very forge. My great grandfather modified the old forge so that if it had enough raw resources, it could craft steel objects autonomously. This predecessor to Dolly supplied all the materials needed to build the Underground Railroad. This machine single-handedly won the Civil War. <laughs> not, not really. I made my own modifications to my great-grandfather's designs. The current Dolly specifications do not require any raw materials. For example, Dolly converts energy from the radioactive science juice directly into matter. I never did sort out why she makes so many copies of things. Oh well, you can never have too many safes, or chairs, or um, coffee tables. <laughs> 